I don't intend to go into programming code, but uh, as you will be, see, it is uh, uh, it is something that is uh, not that difficult, but not that uh, not simple at the same time. Okay, uh, face technology recently has been in the news. Uh, Undercovered, there are a lot of people actually making use of it. I think some of the chief people using it are not only China, but also the UK uh, and various US places. Uh, so I think it is a, a good time to talk about this. Okay, next. Uh, face technology or the process of face recognition can be generally divided into four steps. The first step is the detection of the face, face detection. I will go into more detail later on. The second step is uh, face tracking and this step uh, is usually optional uh, because it is not, Im not so important in the detection, in the recognition process itself, but it can be used to enhance the whole uh, process. The third step is feature extraction. I will explain this later on. And final step is face recognition. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's a GIF, animated GIF. So you can see that uh, this is face detection. Face detection is just to find out where in the image you can find something that looks like a face. Then from that something, uh, yeah, something that looks like a face, you'll notice that the, the, there's a number above this red box. That number indicates the probability that there's a face there. Okay, so you can see it goes uh, from 77% upwards to 99. So this guy has probably set a threshold at about 75%. Then you, when the probability is above this, it will just display his face. Where in the picture can we draw a box around something that looks like a face? You notice that when he turns around, he no longer looks like a face. He doesn't present any looks face, so of course the, the property goes down and the box disappears. The next detection is, oh, wrong computer. Face tracking. Face tracking uh, is once you got the face here, can you see my, my, um, my mouse or not? Mouse cursor? Well, once you get a face here, uh, you should uh, basically be able to detect another face or rather you, you should keep the box there and if the face moves around, tracking means that the box will move with the face. Now in the case of this book down here, you see when he brings it up, then he recognizes the face and when he turns the book around, uh, some of the time, not all the time, or at least the, uh, during the early stages, the box still goes, uh, still registers that as a face. So that, that is really called tracking. Then the feature extraction. Once the face has been detected, you must change the face into something that the computer can understand. So this is just a graphic. Uh, this is a picture, the, there's a picture of a motorcycle on the left and the feature extraction algorithm just means that it extracts information from this image and puts it on into some kind of a, a, a maybe a kind of, some kind of metrics and which stores uh, whether this particular feature is there or not. Um, if I'm getting if I'm going too fast, please stop and ask questions. Uh, I'm quite willing to answer questions because I understand this can be quite obtuse unless you've been working on it. Okay, so feature extraction is probably the most uh, studied part of the uh, phase detection algorithm. So again, the thing that you want to detect and you already have, remember, you already have a face detection algorithm and the face de detection algorithm says that, okay, there is a face around here. So the feature extraction algorithm will actually take this image, literally take this image of this face and try to extract all the features that, uh, that define the face as defined by this extraction algorithm. 
then there is the uh, face recognition process itself. Now, once you've got the features, you compare the features with a bunch of, with a database which has other features which has a record of all the different features of all the different people. In the case of this video here, uh, this animated GIF here, there are two people whom the algorithm has identified. One of them is this guy, Alan Grant. And you, you notice that previously, this, uh, previously it showed numbers but it never showed a identity. Now in this case, they have compared the features with what is in the database and actually come up with the names of the people who are associated with those factors. And it has correctly identified these two as Alan Grant and Ellie, whatever, Settler or something like that. This video is from Jurassic Park 1. Okay. Recap the whole process. Um, Phase detection starts with the image itself. The phase detection finds a place where there is a sufficient high probability that there is a phase. This phase goes through a process called feature extraction, which derives some representation example in a matrix. Then the phase recognition compares this um, query representation with a database of reference representations from reference images star. And the best match is presented as a face recognized. How's that? Does that make any sense? Hello? Hello? Okay, I see Bing Ching Ding. Hi, Bing Ching. Hi, we. Uh, every. If it doesn't make sense, please stop and tell me. Uh, oh, you don't. It does. No problem. Okay, good. Thanks. Thanks. Can, uh, uh, can I just ask one question? Huh? Please, so please, far, please. who is good in face recognition? Which country is good in face recognition? Face recognition, one of the best countries is China. China, China has. Uh, probably put the most resources, anyway, it's got a lot of resources too, anyway, into face recognition because uh, China has an ongoing, you know, la, China got a big, uh, got a very big population and they have put a lot of, uh, firstly, they, they, sur they survey a lot of sensitive areas in China. Secondly, they also use WeChat very extensively and we, uh, WeChat has a lot of applications which require authentication it's not possible to put a fingerprint verifier on the smartphone, but you can actually put a face authentication on the smartphone itself. So uh, in the where there's a lot of opportunity for China to research into face recognition. And so far, China is one of the, is probably the key country re doing research into this area. Uh, of course, the usual suspects are are also doing things also, but China has a lot. China is also very strong in other things. For example, um, gen generally uh, object recognition. Uh, there is a lot of uh, research, even here in Singapore by Chinese companies, uh, developing algorithms. Say for example, you want to buy a, you want to buy a t-shirt. Now, how do you know which of his product is a t-shirt. Say you want to buy a Givenchy t-shirt or whatever, whatever, you know, and Givenchy t-shirt got one arm short, one arm long, something like that. So there will be an intelligent, a so-called intelligent algorithm uh, that detects this type of t-shirts and that will present it, present that thing to you on the computer. So in order to actually di distinguish whether something is a Givenchy t-shirt, which doesn't exist, which I'm just making up as a, as an example, or a particular face, you have to convert that picture into something recognizable by a computer. And once it's recognizable by a computer, it can be um, 
it can be, for example, categorized into a Givenchy t-shirt or somebody's or a bald man's head, like in this case here. So yeah, without a doubt, our facial and object recognition generally is, uh, is one of China's strong points. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, going on to the next. Any other yes. question? Yeah, you based on the database. Uh, let's uh. say your data has uh, 10 people. Mm. Then uh, and a stranger come in, he will still get a certain percentage. Uh. Yes. yes. Then what percentage do you consider as out and in? Okay. okay, it depends on your threshold, right? Uh, like, for example, uh, just now you saw the Jurassic Park thing. And I inserted my face into the Jurassic, uh, Jurassic cast of actors. Uh, it predicts my face quite okay, okay. But that does not mean that uh, that does not mean that uh, it will only it will see my face all the time. What it predicts is it predicts the closest match to the query. So if let's say, as you say lah, you know, if there is no face inside. And the query isn't isn't inside the database, okay? It will predict the closest, but most of the mechanisms have a way of saying the threshold, okay? Like for example, you can see here this is ninety seven point six one percent, okay? Uh, if uh, ninety seven point six one percent, and this contains a human face, okay? But if I want to talk about recognition, then I need to go back a bit. Uh, this one, uh, sorry, this one. In this case, this particular program, uh, anyway, I, I, I played with it so I know what the program is. There is a, what they use is they use distance to measure the difference. And the distance will, can be displayed here. Now, so it's a matter, the distance is something associated with the same, with, with, with the same uh, square. There's a square from Ellie Settler and apparently Ellie Settler is the closest. So um, you threshold that di you threshold that difference, and you can uh, and you only display it when uh, the confi uh, when that threshold when that distance goes below that threshold. Okay, in this case they use a uh, distance measure. In other cases, they, they could use maybe um, uh, something that categorizes the number for example uh, in, 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 you can use a svc uh, a support vector classification support vector classification basically says okay let's say this is the space down here eddie settler is here Alan grant is here so your your query is here where is your query closest to and it's closest to eddie settler or even gets into the Eddie Settler domain, then you say it's Eddie Settler. So it depends on your classification, uh, your classification process, but there is usually a number associated with the classification process. It's not a pure, it may not be a pure uh, uh, go no go. That means either it's in or it doesn't tell you anything at all. That's seldom the case. Did I communicate properly? PC, did I communicate properly? You're muted. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe uh, 10 minutes time, uh, we go for a toilet break. Oh, so fast, huh? Okay, 10 minutes. You, you tell us when, when to go. Uh. Yeah, break. Okay, then I proceed here. Lah. Okay, uh, the best place, the best place on the internet to do study up or to research about this is this place called uh, Pi Image Search. Okay, this is um, okay. I'm opening up this. Uh, I hope you can see it. Okay, is this place on internet where I get a lot, a lot of code to play with and to modify from? A lot of this uh, is actually 
not uh, not new. It's all exists in proper code and especially at this place here. This guy has done a wonderful job of organizing it and making it uh, accessible to everybody. Okay, how to... Wait, let me... Is this the right way? Yeah, okay. Now, playing with the... Um, face, trying to implement the facial recognition on computer, you require several things. Lah. And most of the time, you use uh, Python as a language. OpenCV library. OpenCV library is originally from Intel, but now it's... Uh, and it's a very big... Uh, library of real-time computer vision as well as matrix manipulation functions okay there are other lips li uh, libraries which can be used together with opencv example uh, dlib something called dlib this one has very interesting uh, uh, routines as well and of course there is the framework itself which is either pytorch by facebook or tensorflow by google okay the funny thing is that a lot of these framework uh, de de uh, applications or framework applications are actually behind are already actually incorporated into some of the function calls of OpenCV as well as Dlib. So to a large extent, uh, you may not even need to do training. But there are some caveats to this statement. Uh, you may not even need to do training. But the caveat is that you must depend on the database that already exists for that particular application. In which case, uh, you may, it may not be optimal for your use. Okay, I'm going into the, a bit of detail on, on the different phases of face detection. The first one, remember I said was face detection where you actually look and find which places are, uh, can probably be a face. Now, one way of detecting face, faces uh, is to use a hard cascade. A hard cascade uh, is, hard, or rather hard cascades. Hard cascades is an algorithm which has been developed to find different parts of the face. Uh, here the two eyes are yet are orange uh, are green and then the overall face is blue color so by the time you have this green and you cascade into the overall uh, blue rectangle for face you are pretty confident that there's a face down there how cascades can also detect other parts of the face uh, but it is basically to just detect the face only or to detect the eyes or nose or mouth or something like that uh, this part is actually available as a single call in OpenCV. Another way, now this is a bit more complex now, but uh, another way to detect a face is through, of course, deep learning. Now. And this is actually the deep learning, uh, trying to draw the deep learning algorithm that allows the network to recognize where on the image a face can be. You see that it go it itself is quite complicated, but uh, actually it makes some intuitive sense. Uh, but I'm not going to explain it. I'm just going to say the MN NMS and body box. Now these white boxes, the boxes uh, you see are places which could have a face in it, but you notice that some of them are smaller, some of them are bigger, and some of them are not very accurate at all. It's like this one is pointing at this guy's ear, but it's still flat. It's because this type of, the algorithms that generate uh, bounding boxes are very general. So, and they will generate a lot of possible candidate for faces. So what you need to do after that is to do NMS, known as non-maxima suppression. Non-maximal suppression means basically you just get all these boxes and you suppress anything that's not a maxima. So after you suppress maxima, the most probable are these, these ones over here on stage 2 the net. And then everything is regressed together. You, since this box is within this box, uh, this, box this box can be cancelled. So in the end, what you get is you get something like that. So that's, uh, the, that is only the 
algorithm to detect a face. That means uh, here you've already just applied uh, deep learning to detect a face. And that by itself already means that there is a CNN or, or a CNN behind it. Okay, and uh, what's CNN? Uh? Convolutional Neural Network behind the algorithm already. Okay, any questions again? Feel free to ask. These things are not exactly you. You won't actually find all. The, you only find all of this in technical in technical websites. Of course, if you want to go even deeper, the implementation of it now you find in academic papers. But that is a bit difficult. That's why I highly recommend this uh, the Pi Image Search website because they put a lot of stuff there uh, for everybody to easily learn it. Okay. This is face detection alone. So, any questions? No, ma? Okay, I continue. Uh, Bing Cheng, is it time for your cookie break or? Is it time for your cookie break? Yeah, maybe you, you all want to go for a break. Follow break. Then uh, you can log in again. Immediately. That means I got locked out, so la. Oh, everybody go for a final break. Then we come back, we can log in again. Immediately, I will start another session. Same uh, ID and same password. Okay. Uh, okay. Other question? Any questions? If you want to ask question, you must uh, unmute yourself. Then you can talk. Otherwise, we can't hear you. <laughs> How long is the break? Immediately, immediately, you will come back. Because this one has only 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. So after the break, we will come in a new session, another 40 minutes. Okay. How long is the break? Immediate. La, no break, la, actually. Oh, immediate. La. <laughs> Okay, okay. Wait, I, I need to log out and log in again. Okay. Okay, I'll log out immediately. Okay.